Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Hematite Brown in the 15-minute pool on ICC. So Hematite Brown, this guy is 2041, and his peak rating was 2129, achieved not long ago. And <laughs> he says in the chat, I love you. <laughs> um, he says, just kidding, nice channel. Well, thank you, Hematite Brown. Uh, I'll say thanks. Good luck. Hope you watch this one. Um, oh, he actually doesn't receive tells while he's playing, so... Sorry, Hematite Brown, I tried to say something nice to you. Uh, let's go Let's go with F3 against Hematite Brown. So, I'm going to play this Samish variation with Knight GE2. This is a line I've talked about at length on my channel. It's kind of a pet line of mine. Um, I like it because a lot of times the bishop in the same ish, like doesn't necessarily want to be on e3, which on move six, bishop e3 is the standard move. Uh, now we have a Benoni-esque position where I have a lot of experience in this line. Uh, I'm going to be delaying the development of this bishop until it becomes clear whether bishop e3 or bishop g5 is the correct place for it. So like now that he's played h5, it's very possible for white to play bishop g5 to discourage h4, which is probably what I'll be doing. So. Yeah, let me do that. I'll play bishop g5. I, I recall a line that goes queen b6, queen d2, knight h7. And then white's supposed to play bishop h4 there. Okay, queen a5 I'm not familiar with. Queen a5. So I can play either queen d2 or castle short, is what I'm thinking about. Queen d2 is flexible. Uh, castle short maybe... Less so, but I wonder if Castle Short he could play something like b5. Nah, that's not sound. I doubt that that would be good. Hmm. I think I could Castle Short. Now let's do it. I don't see anything outwardly wrong with this, so we'll play it. I wonder if he'll go a6 and then b5. Yeah, he plays a6, so he's trying to induce me to play a4, and then probably he'll stick his queen on b4. It's usually how they try to operate with the queen out on a5. So I might not go a4. It's an option to forego that move entirely. So a4, queen b4, then queen d2. Mm, that's probably OK, though. Well, we'll play it. We'll play a4, because it's a typical move. It's worth preventing b5, since that leads to just such easy queenside expansion for him. Um, looking at this guy's finger notes, he says uh, he's from the U.S. He's 2250 standard, 2294 blitz, feed a rating of 2006. I don't know what he means by 2250 standard, 2294 blitz. That might be referring to like his USCF uh, regular and quick ratings. Hard to tell. So c4. So with this move, um, he's setting a little trap. If bishop takes c4, I would lose my bishop to queen c5 check, forking the bishop and the king. Uh, and also, he's preparing the c5 square for his knight. It's an ambitious move. I'm thinking I'll play king h1, just to try to threaten bishop takes c4. But he very well might play queen b4 then. It's a risk we might have to take. I think I will play king h1. Ooh, if king h1, though, can he retreat his knight? So the problem with king h1 is that I no longer have the h1 square available for my knight to retreat. So that could be an issue. King h1, knight h7. And then if bishop e7 attacking f8 and d6, he has rook e8, bishop takes d6, h4. It's getting messy and my, my knight is trapped in that scenario. So I wonder if I should pull my bishop back to e3 which would cover this diagonal. I think it's important to cover her, or at least vacate the g1a7 diagonal. I don't really want my king sitting here exposed. So I could pull the bishop back to e3. But again, if queen's, queen b4 intending knight c5, will I have enough play? I'm not sure. I could also play rook f2. That's interesting. Like rook f2 and maybe prepare knight f1 down the line, or rook f2, bishop f1 even. That's a creative way to defend this pawn. 
Rook f2 is not a normal move by any means in this position. But given that his dark square bishop has difficulties actually getting on this diagonal, I can probably play it. I can get away with rook f2. What about rook f2, knight e5? Does that bug me? Yeah, I'm going to try rook f2. I've kind of learned that in these 15-minute games, if you're considering a few different possibilities, you just have to go with which one looks best after considering them for a minute or two max. I mean, very rarely should you be spending more time than that. In my last video, I did spend a lot of time in the opening because I thought it was a critical position. So I'm going to be more aware of my time usage in this game and going more so with my instincts and what looks correct in the moment because you just can't really afford to take prolonged thinks, especially several prolonged thinks in a row. Yeah, I just didn't like king h1 because it deprived my knight of the h1 square. So he plays knight e5, so he's defending the c4 pawn. I could play h3 and then try to go with f4. That's a normal way of preparing that pawn advance. I think I'll do that. Um, is h4, like queen c5, trouble for me? Just pinning the rook? I don't think so, especially. Yeah, let's go h3. I don't want to play the immediate f4 because then he can play knight g4. So I'm trying to overprotect the g4 square with this move. This is the point of my play. Moves I would expect him to consider here would be queen b4, uh, maybe queen c5. Hmm. Honestly, not much else. I think moves like bishop d7 while looking standard do not address the threat of f4 properly. Because I will be playing that move next. That should be obvious to him at this point. And if he has to sink his knight into d3, he's just going to lose a pawn. So I think queen b4, queen c5. Maybe queen b6. But if queen b6, I have f4 anyways. So I don't think that move will be appearing on the board. If queen b4, f4, knight d3, yeah, I just went a pawn. Because again, my rook comes in handy. If this bishop has to capture the knight on d3, it's very nice that the rook covers the pawn on b2. That's one of the primary reasons I played rook f2 along with covering this diagonal. Anything else he could consider? Knight h7 doesn't do much, nor does knight d7. Both of those moves would allow bishop e7. Yeah, I'll be curious what he does. If queen c5, I'm thinking I'll play queen d2. in order to prepare bishop e3, or just play f4 as planned. <laughs> I keep thinking I need to uh, be more cautious about playing f4, but I really don't. It is my threat, so. Him protecting the c4 pawn doesn't change that, because the exchange will be taking place on d3 if he jumps in with his knight. Maybe if queen c5, I would play queen d2 just to have the option of bishop e3. Because if, let's say, queen c5, f4, knight d7, um, maybe my bishop is stranded on g5, but he does play queen b4. Okay. So f4, if knight d3, we just want a pawn. Uh, so f4, knight e d7, is that his point? Could be. I'll play it. I like this move still. If knight e d7, I'm thinking of doing something thematic for this line, which is e5, d takes e5, and then f5. Put 
pushing past and blocking off the e5 square and trying to focus on playing on the king side. And also maybe utilizing the e4 square for uh, my knight. He can take on c3 here, but I take on e5 and I think I'm just winning a piece. Because even though my c3 knight is hanging, his knight on f6 is hanging as well. So I think knight ed7 will be played. I don't see his compensation if he plays knight d3. This move I didn't anticipate. It's interesting. Knight h7. So if I take e5, he's going to take my bishop on g5. Then I have trouble on the dark squares. So bishop e7 or bishop h4 will be my candidates here. Bishop e7, he has rook e8. And am I getting anywhere? F takes e5, rook takes e7. Mm. Doesn't seem advantageous. So I think bishop f, uh, bishop h4 looks like the move. I wonder if bishop h4, then he'll take on c3. He could. Well, I'll play it and dare him to take on c3. So if queen takes b2, I take on e5, he takes c3, I can't play e takes d6 because I lose my rook on a1. I could play, though, queen takes b2, just rook c1. And with his queen lined up with my rook on f2, my rook on f2 would be x-raying that piece. It's nice because if he plays knight d3 then, hopping forward, I do have bishop takes d3, discovered attack on the queen. So I don't know if he wants to speculate with queen takes b2. My gut says no, he shouldn't. So knight d7 instead? Then e5 isn't as good as it was previously because I wouldn't be attacking his knight that was on f6. So I wouldn't be doing that with tempo. I could play just queen d2 or queen c2, though. Actually, queen c2 would run into bishop d4, so probably queen d2. But then knight c5, threatening knight b3. Let's say knight c5, uh, I don't know. Bishop e7, knight b3. There's some deficiencies to putting the queen on d2 if his knight is bound for c5. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I will play after knight d7. I think he should play that, so decent possibility we get that position on the board. Sacrificing on h5 would be interesting. Like bishop takes h5, and then g takes h5, knight takes h5, hitting his dark square bishop. Something tells me I'm not getting enough, though, in that case. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm attacking that valuable dark square bishop, the best defender of his king. My queen could come up to g4 as well. Is hematite a type of rock? Like a rock formation? I'm trying to remember my ninth grade biology of Minnesota class where we talked about various rock formations, like igneous and stuff. Seem to recall hematite having something to do with rocks. So if you're a geologist, feel free to chime in. <laughs> um, okay, so knight d3, bishop takes d3, c takes d3. If I take with the queen, he has bishop d4, I guess is what he's saying. Well, I have to take this. There's no doubt about that. Uh, now, queen takes d3, yeah, bishop d4, there's no tricky reply to that. Um, I could just play a prophylactic move here, like king h2. Do I really care if he takes my knight on c3? I don't think so. 
I don't think I should, at least. I could move my rook to, like, rook d2, let's say. But I think I can win this pawn without assigning the rook to go take it. So I'm thinking about a king move. Maybe king h1 is slightly better than king h2, I don't know. Because king h1, uh, I would stay out of any trouble. Like, I'm thinking of king h2, maybe he can go g5. Point being, if bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, f takes g5, bishop e5 could be annoying pinning my knight to my king. So for that reason, I think I will do this. Yeah, king h1, let's do it. Useful prophylaxis against something appearing on the a7 g1 diagonal. I would be more than happy to see bishop take c3. I doubt he'll play that move because, yeah, he wins a pawn temporarily, but giving up that strong dark square bishop shouldn't be worth it. He needs this piece for protection. It's his best minor piece. The light square bishop and the knight don't come close to the value of this bishop. What else can he really do here? He could play something radical like f5 in a bid for counterplay, but I don't trust it. E takes f5, bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, take on d3. Okay, so he's choosing development, and it looks like he's content with just giving up this pawn. That might be a, a reasonable plan. So if queen takes d3, is he going to go b5? I have this feeling he will. Uh, nevertheless, let's do it. Pawn's a pawn. Also, it helps us swing this rook over if we want. So say b5 is played. a takes b5, a takes b5. I could trade down the a file, but maybe I'll just go rook e1 or something instead. And he does play b5. So a takes b5, a takes b5, rook e1, trying to go e5. Rook a f1 is also possible. Let's take. I'm just hesitant to take on a8 because um, I'd like to keep a rook on the back rank for protection. I wonder if queen b3 is what he has in mind, though. Like if rook e1, queen b3, threatening b4, kind of creeping closer. Could be annoying. So maybe I should go rook d1, protecting my queen. Then if queen b3, I have more options. Yeah, maybe that's better. Yeah, let's do it. If I were black, I think I would play rook e8. Just to rule out bishop e7. Um, and prepare queen b3. Because if he goes queen b3 now, then bishop e7, rook moves somewhere, bishop takes d6. Don't know that he has full compensation. Even after b4, knight b1, or something. Knight e2 even. Maybe knight b1 is safer. So he might want to post a rook on e8 just to guard against bishop e7 incursions. I'm up a pawn, but he has the bishop pair and play. I think that was a good decision by him on move 17, knight d3. Because it looked like he was getting pushed back there, and he's giving himself practical chances now. Hmm. My rook is undefended on f2. I have to keep that in mind. Okay, so he just pumps up the pressure on the knight. I really want to go e5, but it's not a good idea. 
with his queen on b4 especially, it's not a good idea. Because my bishop on h4 is loose. What about f5? f5 could just run into g5. Yeah, my pieces are a little bound up now. If bishop e7, rook e8 doesn't help. Uh, knight g e2 maybe, standing firm. I don't know. Knight g e2, queen b3 will probably be the answer. Knight d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, b4. Always that b4 move. Uh, I think this is okay, though. And my knight isn't doing anything particularly useful on g3, so might as well bring it back for protection. And I might be able to stick it on d4 too to block off his dark square bishop. So it could prove useful there. I'm now second guessing whether I want my rook on d1. Ooh. He can take on b2, can't he? Ah, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. Knight g2 was a mistake. Uh, if he can take on b2, that is. Yeah. Uh, I have rook b1, but he has queen a3 in that case. Okay, so I just made a mistake. Now I'm going to have to make it interesting. Maybe e4 now. Maybe e4 take... Hmm. E4 take knight e4 maybe. Yeah, blanked on the b2 pawn. <clears throat> now b4 is coming so quickly here after. Rook b1 doesn't seem to help. It's always because of this undefended queen on b3, or the weakly defended queen on b3. Bishop e7, just b4. Also not helping. Okay, let's mix it up with e5. We're getting low on time, so... Time to make some tough decisions. So I'm trying to use e4 as a clearance square. Um, if e5 and he takes it, I'll have to decide if I want to play knight e4 or f takes e5 first. Probably f takes e5 first, just to open lines. It's going to get messy. I just uh, am much less certain about e5 under these circumstances than I was earlier. e5 is a move I always had in mind. I mean, it's, it's a typical move in this opening. If bishop f5 here, I do have queen takes b5, I think. Even that is messy. You can go queen c2, maybe. So my pieces are all kind of uh, held together by a string at the moment. But he's got a lot to think about in two and a half minutes. These non-increment games are just brutal. I and mean, if you stop to think, you can be a dead man walking. <laughs> um, okay, he does take it. Yeah, let's take. We'll see if he'll capture on e5. Probably will. Then I might play rook df1 even. Attack f7. Although that just loses c3, but if I crash through on f7, am I getting enough? <laughs> it's very speculative. 
Maybe for two minutes on the clock, it's not so speculative, but OTB, I don't know if I would be playing this way. So rook d f1. Then he has to decide if he wants to go something like, you know, capture on c3. If I play knight e4 here, he can play queen c2 and look for exchanges. What about rook b1? Rook b1, maybe rook takes c3 is possible. Hmm. Queen f3, uh, doesn't do much. All right, I'm going to speculate. There's not a lot of time left. If I can make him think at least down to like a minute or so, then I think this move will be justified. If I were him, I would decide pretty quickly whether I want to just give up f7, take c3, or do something else. I mean, it's a little scary, like bishop takes c3, rook takes f7, allowing that for him. It might just be winning, but it's, it's a little scary. There's a lot that can go wrong. Because now we'll be playing basically a bullet game for the rest of the game. Okay, so Rook A1, he's trying to simplify. But if I take F7, what are you going to do? You take F1, I take. You take C3, I have Queen takes G6. I can also play Knight D1 here. Knight D1 looks pretty good too, right? Knight d1, queen c2, though. Trying to get the queens off. Huh. I'm going to take here. We'll see if he'll take here. I have a feeling he will because the rook looks scary on f7. Yeah, he does. Okay, so now what? Like bishop f5 or something? If bishop f5, I might sack on f5. And then after he takes back, I take with the queen hitting his rook and also his bishop. Uh, he has some checks on the back rank. Does he not? Yeah, he does. Uh, if queen takes b5 here, he has bishop takes c3. Okay, so rook takes f5, g takes f5. What's going on there? Queen takes f5, queen a1 check. If not for queen a1 check. Hmm. Uh, Got to make a decision soon. Um... I see something interesting that I might go with. I'm going to go here. If he takes on c3, I'll play rook takes f5 then. Wow, he takes that way. Okay, ooh. He has rook takes h3. Didn't see that. Okay. Well, let's invade now. We'll try to attack his king. This king is very open. So is mine, though. <laughs> Let's keep that in mind. Material-wise, he's up a little bit. Uh, now maybe threatening to take on h3? Time warning. Um, let's go back here. Attack his bishop. Let's go here. No easy trade. No simple trade. Check. Just give a check first. Now maybe bishop e5 could be a threat. Uh, let's go check. check. See if he'll trade. Check. 
check. Ooh, I dropped my queen, actually. <laughs> yeah, 92 at the end. Um, okay, so that got interesting, actually, in the time scramble. Uh, yeah, but it went a, 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 astray for me when I played knight ge2, I'd say. The like great right towards the end here, or towards the middle game. Uh, move 23. Just saying thanks for the game. Okay. Yeah, he played this line pretty actively. I'm not familiar with the queen a5 move. So, as I said, white's delaying the development of the queenside bishop in order to decide whether bishop e3 or bishop g5 is the better move. And once he's played g5, uh, h5 that is, g5 seems to be the better square. So here, queen a5, castles, a6, a4. Somewhat debatable whether I want to play a4 or not, but... All right, so right about here. In this position, I was considering rook f2, which I played, king h1, and <coughs> I think I might have even mentioned something about queen d2 or bishop e3. Bishop e3, I think, was the move. Let's just see what the engine thinks is for choice. Queen d2, queen c1. Hmm. What does it think about king h1? Yeah, king h1, knight h7. With a problem being that if my bishop loses sight of the h4 square, then pawn h4 traps this knight. So that's why I don't like that move. I thought rook f2, everything considered, was okay, but he did get quite a bit of play. Now here, knight f1. Knight f1, maybe making way towards e3 to attack c4. I played h3 in preparation for f4. He went queen b4. f4, okay. The engine likes a5. Hmm, I didn't consider that move in many cases. a5 does discourage him from playing b5 to connect his pawns together. Also, it might allow me to play rook a4 in some instances. This queen can get trapped or cornered. So queen b4, f4, knight h7, bishop h4, yeah, knight d3. Seems like he gets reasonable play. Yeah, king h1, because if I take on d3, then bishop d4 is the point. Oh, yes, even here. Maybe I have sufficient yeah. counterplay on the dark squares if this were to happen. This would be an interesting continuation, in fact. Because as I said, that dark square bishop is such a key defender of black's king, and it's his best minor piece most of the time. So maybe maybe an exchange sacrifice is plausible for white. So take on d3, king h1, bishop d7, queen takes d3. Okay, so so far so good, I guess. I'm up a pawn, but he has, he has counterplay. Yeah, very possible I chose the wrong square for this rook. D1 might have been overly cautious, but I saw that queen b3 was an issue if I move the rook somewhere. And I don't, I'm not thrilled about the prospect of trading because I think my king can become weak on the back rank. I want a rook on the first rank to guard against uh, his rook intruding here. So, so that's why I chose rook d1, but yeah, maybe rook af1 is a better idea. Pumping up the pressure down the f file. In case of a future f5, there's already firepower there. I ended up doubling rooks on the f-file anyways, so. In any case, though, I see the eval was going down, and it seemed like the computer was admitting that black's play is uh, more significant than it appeared at first glance. That bishop here is a force to be reckoned with if he is able to push his pawns and gain some space, especially this b-pawn. If he can push that b-pawn. I could easily find myself on my back foot here. Yeah, and this this was a blunder. Knight GE2, completely losing sight of the B2 pawn. But in fact, my position is not so good already. Computer puts black as uh, maybe slightly better even. So Rook D1 was really that bad of a move. What about Rook E1? As I thought about Rook E1 to prop up E5. Not as bad as Rook D1 probably. Rook fc8 was a good move. I think he played this stage of the game 
pretty well. Queen takes b2. And here I gambled with e5 because I kind of sensed my position was not good. But I looked up at the clocks and he had taken some time over the previous moves. Um, so I'd rather gamble now when there's still plenty of material on board and a decent number of chances for either of us to go wrong. Rather do this now than try to defend passively and potentially just get an even worse position. So, yeah, knight ge2 was almost a double question mark move. Very bad oversight on my part. Yeah, and he's playing well here. I mean, the whole time I was doing this, I had a distinct feeling that <laughs> what I was doing was not sound, but, you know, there's, there's no way I can repair the damage that knight ge2 did, so I have to look for practical chances here. Okay, rook takes f7 was a good chance. Check. Bishop f5. Yeah, I almost pulled the trigger on rook takes f5 here. But what I didn't like is that after g takes f5, queen takes f5, which looks pretty decent at first because it hits both of these, he has this move queen a1. And I can't go to h2 with my king. And if I block with my knight, like knight g1, then queen takes c3 takes care of both of those undefended pieces. And I don't have a perpetual or anything because his king hides on h8 and uh, he controls this diagonal well. So the tactics don't don't work for me here. Uh, check, yeah, and if knight b1, then his queen is defending the bishop, so he can just yeah play a move like rook f8. Looks like he's winning. So that's why I couldn't do rook takes f5. When I played queen e3, he played rook takes c3. When I originally calculated queen e3 with like the very limited amount of time I had here. I said, oh, queen rook takes c3 allows queen takes e5. But then when I got this position OT over the board, um, I saw, in fact, his idea is rook takes h3 check with a discovered attack on my queen. So lots of pitfalls. So I took, he took. Yeah, and now it was pretty much just 35 seconds versus 27 seconds for the game. And yeah, he's probably winning, but with this amount of time, that matters little. There's a few things I had to keep in mind, like if queen takes b5, I think he can play bishop takes h3, or at least I thought he could. Maybe I don't have to respond to that, but... Yeah, very messy towards the end, and you can't really seriously analyze this portion of the game. This is the only problem with... Um, I really wish ICC would have uh, an increment pool, like 15 plus 10, which is a popular time control on chess.com. That would be great to have a pool of 15 plus 10. That encourages more high-quality play overall. And that's why I'm, I'm in favor of increment time controls over the board as well. I much prefer, uh, like, game 90 with a 30-second increment versus, uh, like, let's say, game in two hours with a five-second delay, which that time control, game in two hours with a five-second delay, will sound completely foreign to people who don't play tournaments in the U.S., but you'd be surprised, guys. Like a lot of tournaments in the U.S. use delay rather than increment. Still, even though I think the personally, I think the benefits of increment are very clear, and tournaments shouldn't really be using delay anymore. Um, but there's some people out there who disagree. So check. I mean, it doesn't make a huge difference overall. But I think I think any time control you have that encourages um, a result that's decided on the board versus on the clock. I think that's a good thing. I think if you're playing serious chess, like that's what you want, right? You want it to be decided on the board rather than a time scramble at the end. So, oh, and actually I could have played queen takes f5 check here. And check. after the trades, my pawn is queening. So you see I was winning all along. You should have just saved yourself the trouble, human type brown. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, you played a very good game, Human Type Round. Uh, it sounds like you watched my channel, so if you want to chime in and give your feedback on this one, feel free. But yeah, I thought you Check. played well to get good play um, after you lost the pawn, and it might not be so bad even. And here at the end, knight e2 was possible, and uh, I would be resigning if not for the fact that he has one second left. So, all right, interesting battle in this one. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. And if you have any feedback on this game, please feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard video. Bye.